I'm on vacation starting now. And my my coworker is got a big web meeting with our client at Global. Like they're based in the UK. And so he has to do a WebEx. He's never done one before. Okay. So I was teaching him how to use the WebEx service and in particular he wanted to learn how the how to get the other person to show their screen. Right. So what I did, as I was walking him through the process, I pulled up a picture of a naked dude on my computer. <laughs> And the moment he flipped it to show my screen, it was just naked dude all on his screen. And he just lost it. Oh my god. Nicely done. That's wrong, Jet. And that's how he'll never forget how to use a WebEx. Jet's like, coincidentally, I'm not on vacation, I'm fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> vacation is indefinite. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, you are listening to episode 32 of the Recurring Bosscast. I'm Jet from SplitKick.com. With me is Jason from Inside Gaming Daily and Slick Gaming. I am still laughing at that story. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt from Biff Man Pop and the Screaming Ego. And then the camera just pans to me, naked man. Yes. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, it was just a spur of the moment thing. Like, how can I make this interesting? And I was like, oh, I know. Google search sexy men. And that's yeah. what I did. Wow. Yes. I don't know if HR is going to fire me for that, but <laughs> and having it on record here, but I think that if he learned how to use WebEx and never forgets it, then it is a job well done. It's true. You picked something uh, that would sear into his mind. Also, I told my boss about it shortly afterwards, and he just laughed, so <laughs> I think I'm okay. I think you're okay. <laughs> but really, there are, just, there are no winners in that dangerous game. <laughs> I think everyone wins. <laughs> oh my god. So, Jason, what's going on with you? Uh, it, as someone that has worked in HR, I uh, don't know, the, <laughs> the problems with that story are just surmounted. Uh, no, um, uh, not a lot. So, uh, I mean, you know, Christmas is coming around, obviously, and mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of trouble getting our Christmas packages shipped and all that jazz. So I actually, like 30 minutes ago, I was still standing in line at our post office, which for some reason is like 15 minutes from our house, which is really inconvenient. But anyways, beyond all these side stories, we were waiting there for... I'd say max 45 minutes in line. And we were waiting in line for a long time. This guy eventually said, hey, is anyone here to pick up packages? You can get in this line. So we hopped over there, waited in that line for like, I'd say 10 minutes before he finally got to us. Gave him the package. He checked my ID. And he probably was walking back and forth for another good 10 to 15 minutes trying to find my package. He came out once and was like, oh, can you just verify the address? I can't really find it. He walked back and we can like see him walking back and forth. And... I'm just standing with Laura, and, like, you can tell everyone is just burning a hole in our back because, you know, there's only two other people working there. So we're holding up the line, but it's not really our fault. Ugh. And so we finally get the package, and uh, uh, it just took forever. And this guy next to us was like, yeah, I've been waiting in line. This lady over here, you know, jumped ahead of me, and, you know, she was she used to be behind me, but I had to get in this line and wait. And it was just this terrible, like, cliche story of post office lines. And I'm still rubbing my eyes and forehead because it was so ridiculous, but <laughs> it's over. So like that should be the only real package besides like an Amazon one we're waiting on for Christmas. So I guess the holidays can start now. Anyways, what about you guys? Christmas all done? I've officially on break from work. Nice. So I booked off a couple, the last few days of work because our vacation days don't carry over. That's okay. I didn't really, I just had them sitting around. So like, why not just take the holidays early? So... I'm just going to be chilling like a villain for the next little bit. Uh, besides that, just assorted Christmas parties um, between my work Christmas party, my mom's work Christmas party, which is a really big deal. She works at an IT company, and they famously spoil their employees nice. with gifts and stuff in Christmas time. Like, no gift is cheaper than $500, and this is a company with <laughs> 100 people at it. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it's funny, my mom's been there for a number of years now. And she got an iPad Air. Wow. And she was like, oh, an iPad Air. I already have three tablets. I already have another <laughs> iPad. And mine has 3G, and this one doesn't have 3G or 4G on it. Oh, well. And then Jet, she, turns like, her I'll take it. she turns to her coworker and says, what did you get? And he's like, oh, 
I got the 60-inch TV, but I kind of wanted the 55-inch smart TV. That one's also <laughs> LED, and the one I got is plasma. Wow. So... <laughs> First world problems. Just like grown-up children, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they but are Tommy the got this one. <laughs> <laughs> so in a crazy roundabout thing, my mom went to the Apple Store and exchanged hers for a version with 4G. Then I got her iPad 2, and I gave my iPad 1 to my little cousin who's 11, and then he gave his hand-me-down tablet. It was the Google Nexus 7 to his little sister. So, nice. I don't know. It all works out, I guess. Everyone wins, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's a season of sharing. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally what it goes like with our phones. So, like, Laura got a new one, so I got her old one. Her mom got my old one. My parents got her old one. And then I think we're going to get another phone. It's just going to keep going down generations. <laughs> so long as you don't break them. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Matt? Uh, nothing. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to finish out the, the week strong. And then next week, obviously, we're on holidays. So I get to work from home for the week, which is nice. And, uh, yeah, just going to take it easy. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Liza. Oh. So Liza works in a bank. And uh, on so this past Friday, I don't know when this recording is going to go up, but the Friday that I'm talking about, Friday the 13th, that just mm -hmm. passed. Uh, so she's standing at the bank uh, counter, I guess, helping one of her employees cash out or whatnot. And uh, she looks up from the bank counter and right where she's standing, you can see sort of right out the front uh, window of the bank. And so she's standing there and she looks up and right in the window is a guy standing with a Jason mask on from the horror oh movies. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, not even, I, I'm not making this up. So she looks up. And she sees this guy standing there, and she kind of does this audible sort of, like, gasp. And then the employees look up, and they all see this guy standing there, and then he just kind of turns around and walks away. <laughs> My God, <this> <laughs> It's, like, the creepiest thing I've ever heard. So, just in passing, I call her, and I think I was getting the snow tires on my car or something. So I called her, I was like, oh, you know, I got the snow tires in the car. And she goes, oh, okay, great. She goes, oh, by the way, um, so this blah, blah, blah. and then she goes oh and then i looked out the window and there was a guy in a jason mask standing there i'm like yeah okay i'm gonna come get you <laughs> so, <laughs> seriously yeah so that was interesting nothing since but i'm assuming it was probably just a friday the 13th gag or something or it was a ghost I, yeah something like that but it, more than just her saw it so she didn't you know make it up or anything or hallucinate at least she didn't do the thing they do in movies where they're all stupid, like, I'm going to go look for it by myself and, like, walk <laughs> yeah, exactly. back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I'm not going to wear shoes. A weapon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or just, like, a candle for light. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not even a flashlight, just the candle. And it's or raining. a flashlight, but a, de but a dead battery. Yes, yeah, exactly. And then they have to bang it on their hands, like, oh, no, it's not working. Why isn't it working? <laughs> The way you preface that story by being like, oh, I forgot to tell you. I thought you were going to say something like, Liza and I are engaged. Or something oh, like, no. You know, it's just, no. By Whoa. the way, I forgot this whole part of my life. Uh, no. Matt, you and Liza are engaged? No. What? No, not yet. Boss no. cast exclusive. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What, what, what's happening here? Hold on. <laughs> Liza and engaged. Phone. That's what you just told us. <laughs> it's amazing. Somehow I feel, I feel like I was uh, forced into that there. <laughs> no. Not yet. Not yet. Ooh. But... Uh, yeah, so, and then other than that, uh, yeah, just getting Christmas shopping done, and uh, yeah, sort of coming down to the wire, like every year, but <laughs> right. should should be okay. Have you had any chance to play some games? Uh, yes, I did, and I played, I, I broke up my Vita for the first time in a while, and uh, I bought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did, and I played Tearaway, and Tearaway is fantastic. I'm assuming none of you guys have played it. No. Unfortunately, no. Okay, so here's the thing about Tearaway. And it's something that I found sort of lacking with the Vita in general is that everything on the Vita seems to be either like a cheesy port of something else or just, you know, sort of, I don't know. I find everything to be sort of lackluster, a little unimaginative. But Tearaway I got specifically because I'd heard good things about it. And literally, I would say from my experience with it, I beat it. It is probably the perfect Vita game. I would Whoa, say that anybody that has a Vita game, or anybody that has a Vita rather, needs to try this game and, and needs to play it because it literally utilizes every feature of the Vita. There isn't a button or like a maneuver or a, a tilt function or whatever that I didn't use. Everything is incorporated into the game. Even the front facing camera, which never gets used. Nice. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And I mean, it's all made out of paper, the entire world. So hence tear away. But uh, everything's made out of paper, and 
all of the little animations and the little transitions and everything are all so for instance like your guy walks but his legs are like accordion paper so they just extend oh, and cute. contract when he walks and stuff so everything's really yeah exactly it's really cute looking and and uh just a really interesting unique experience and it involves you as a player in the actual game itself so you're the like sort of you control the little paper guy but he refers to you as the you like the y-o-u and they all look up at you like you're the sort of like godlike creature controlling everything and they make reference to you and the game talks to you and you get to interact with the game in certain ways and the game interacts with you in certain ways and uh yeah really really cool i would definitely recommend anybody that has a vita needs to play tearaway so yes or no should you buy a vita for this game i think the experience of the game would be good if you have a vita I don't necessarily think that the library of Vita games warrants you to buy a Vita. <laughs> and I don't right. think Tearaway changes that. Um, if you have a Vita, I would definitely pick up Tearaway, though. It's it's definitely a game to buy if you have a Vita. I think once you're done beating it, though, then you look at what's left to play on the Vita, it's not, not a whole lot. So, mm. hmm. Are we at least getting close to a point where you could say Tearaway is the must-play game, and then alongside these handful of other games, now you've got a reason to buy the Vita? Yeah, you think that? Um, I think there are, like, Uncharted, for instance, is really good on the Vita. Tearaway is obviously really good. There's a couple of decent games. I still don't think the library is robust enough, but um, we'll see, I guess, what happens in the coming coming year. I, I hope that the, the library gets beefed up. I know that there's a couple of RPGs coming. I can't yeah. think of the names of them right now, but it looks decent. And then, obviously, Final Fantasy X is getting a HD remake for the Vita which will be interesting, but um, hopefully we see a lot of, or at least a, a few new IPs, and hopefully that'll sell some systems. Because I think we were talking earlier about the install base being pretty low. Yeah. yeah, according to VG Charts, I know they're not necessarily the most accurate numbers in the world, but they had it at about 6 million. And what did you say the download rate for Terraway was last month? Last I saw, according to NPDs, 14,000. Oh, it's a travesty. That's I kind of bought it on a whim. I didn't really, like, I wasn't looking to play it. I, I mean, like, I, I was curious about it. I saw it. I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll, I'll just take a risk. I bought it, played it, and I loved it. So really, really cool. Did you buy the physical disc or did you get the... Uh, no, I got the digital. Wait, can you get physical discs or anything for the Vita? Yeah. Yeah, the little memory yeah. cards, right? Yeah, SD cards. Yeah. And you can get Tearaway on uh, on physical uh, SD card, too. But no, I, I got the digital version. I watched Steph play a little bit of Tearaway at Target, and she said she liked it. Yeah. There you go. So Matt likes it, and Steph likes it. Therefore, <laughs> game of the year. Tear away. Clearly. It's so, guys, it's honestly, it's so intuitive when you play it. Like, everything is just, I really can't say enough about it. It's, Who it's is a really the developer? Game. That is a great question. Media um, Molecule. Yeah, Media Molecule. Oh, That's really? It. Oh, okay, cool. I like their stuff. I can dig that. Man, it's so cool. <laughs> so, as part of my Boxing Day agenda, I'm kind of looking... For a PlayStation Vita, I'm not. Okay. I'm still like a little weary on the library. I mean, if I were to get it, I would definitely get Tearaway because that seems like the go-to game for it. Um, my interest in it more is more from the remote play perspective for PS4. Yeah, the remote yeah. play works really well. I really like that feature on the Wii U, and if I can do that on the PS4, that seems also awesome. So, if the price is right, I think I would do it. Honestly, if they if they came up with a bundle. Yeah, I was going to say, if they came up with a tearaway bundle, that'd be that'd be great. All right, I'll keep my eyes out for that. Anything else, Matt? Um, what else have I been playing? Uh, I don't really think there's anything too big now. I've been, I've been playing Ghost a little bit more, so I've been getting... I know you and I had a bit of a <laughs> horrendous uh, team-up <laughs> <laughs> earlier on this one, but uh, I've been playing a bit more, been learning the maps a little bit better, so I'm not getting uh, beaten up as much, but uh, getting getting better, I think. Great. Yeah. Um, I haven't played Call of Duty Ghosts in a while. I've been playing some other stuff, but I do mean to get back to it. I would like to suck a little less. But it's it's suffering from the same thing I find the Vita is like I I don't really have anything else to play <laughs> on the PS4, right? So, which is part of the reason why I went back to my Vita and bought Tearaway because I was like, uh, I'm kind of bored with my PS4 right now. Yeah, I, it's gonna be dry on the PS4 for quite some time. Yeah, I think so. Till March, anyway, I guess. Yeah, I guess for Infamous, but I don't even like Infamous, so I don't I don't know. When I, I think I'll probably just get it just because it's there. <laughs> like, it'll be something to play. Yeah, maybe. 
Jason, how about you? Uh, we've been working a lot. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, for just retail jobs, but Laura and I are still playing through some Nintendo Land stuff, so that's still pretty fun. Just playing those games, I don't know, just passes time, and it's nice. I mean, it's a fun way to just relax, which is great. Good Nintendo quality. But beyond that, I was actually really happy uh, they finally got the Miiverse up on the 3DS, so that was pretty cool. Nice. Ultimately, the exact same thing as the Wii U version, just a bit more clumsy to navigate because it's smaller and not as not as intuitive, I would say. But it's still pretty fun because you, you can still look at all the communities and see the ridiculous posts that people do. And I'm trying to think of a game we were looking up. I think it was some, like, Barbie game. And it might have actually been on the Wii U, but, like, someone's posts were absolutely insane. Like, he would take these pictures of, like, Ken, like having like a bamboozled look on his face and he'd be like "Uh uh-oh trouble in paradise and like he had like 50 of these things just going over (laughs) and over and it was hilarious i was like yep this is why the meverse exists (laughs) for this exact question um but anyways uh, another cool feature i never really thought of um someone was posting on the 3ds meverse for uh i think it was professor layton and the miracle mask Mm -hmm. and it was really cool because he was like oh i don't know how to solve this puzzle and you know you can take a screen cap and like put it up there and i was like wow that's like that's really neat like instead of having to you know because if, if when the new one the azran legacy comes out like no one's going to have those walkthroughs immediately so like posting it to the meverse might actually be pretty sweet and i kind of saw that i never thought of that before and i think that's a neat neat community feature that you can do you can get help kind of instantly and that made me feel cool that it exists but still not as crazy good as anything else because the install base isn't as big but we'll see did you help anyone out uh yeah, there was a few ones uh that I actually remembered where they're like, oh, I can't remember how to get this one, and it was like, you had to uh, rearrange these blocks like in a certain order so that someone could only walk on like odd ones. Uh, it was a weird like puzzle, but yeah, I actually remembered it, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's this, this, and this, and so I assume he took it to advice because he didn't respond back, but it was fun. I like I like contributing, and then there's always ridiculous drawings, so that's like people have no no life, I guess, and they just draw Zelda and Epona artwork all the time. <laughs> Jason living right. out his Nintendo counselor dreams. Exactly. Just helping oh, one game at a time. Just yeah. going through the Miiverse, exactly. looking at every single game and say, here's how I can help. Yes, that would actually be an awesome job. <laughs> I would do that. But still rocking the 3DS train. Uh, since there was nothing else to really play, I actually went through some of my old games and I put in Centipede Infestation for my 3DS, which is also on the Wii. But it's okay. It's not great. I mean, I bought it for, I think, $3.00. But it's uh it's like Robotron in terms of shooter. So, you know, you shoot up, down, left, or right, and just kill all the bugs that come on the screen. And um, it's by way forward, so it's not an atrocious game. It's just not really exciting. So that kind of sucks. Mm. But if you're looking for a fix for just a few dollars, I mean, it was it provided me with some good gameplay on a few breaks. But sadly, it's probably over. Oh, and it also has terrible, terrible cutscenes and voice acting. <laughs> so there's that for it. So not a game of the year. A glowing cool. review from Jason. <laughs> yes. Terrible, terrible cutscenes. Okay gameplay. And it's by a way forward. Done. Actually, maybe I'll write that and put it on my blog. That's it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but unfortunately, with all the work, I've not been able to play much of else. So hopefully you guys can pull the rest of this weight. All right. I've played a little bit of Lego Marvel Super Heroes. I picked that up on PS3 as part of a Black Friday sale. And immediately hated it. Yes. What? Yeah, I I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I don't really like the Lego games. Nope. I've never liked any of them. They actually make me feel quite dumb because I struggle on the puzzles all the time. And with this particular one, everyone said this one was really good. And it has the Marvel license and I really like Marvel. So I thought that would be enough to get me through. And it totally wasn't. I was just like, no, this is not for me at all. So I grabbed that in a bunch of other games. I traded it in, and instead I got Skylander Swap Force on the PlayStation 4. Nice. Nicely done. I am actually quite surprised with how good that game is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because after Skylander's Giants, I was really disappointed in the series and was wondering, like, where do they go from here? Because it only got worse. And it's actually really cool. I like the new Swap Force toys. They look really cool, and I like the ability for them to swap. And it actually has meaningful differences in the gameplay, where the Swap Force guys have, like, attacks that are mapped to the top half of the body versus attacks mapped to the bottom half. So let's say I'm using... What was that guy's name? The the octopus dude who comes with it. There's an octopus guy and a bomb-throwing robot. 
And if I wanted the bomb throwing robot, like the bomb throwing attack mixed with the octopus legs, I'd just switch them and go from there. Sweet. Sounds awesome. Um, th- so just more options. The game looks gorgeous on PS4. Oh my goodness, running in like 10, 1080p, full 60 frames a second, and it's just so bright and vibrant. And I guess my brother, I know a lot of people throw this around a lot, like, oh, this game looks like the Toy Story movie. It's actually starting to get to that level of fidelity, and it's pretty awesome. Wow. Sweet. And from a gameplay perspective, it's, I think it's solid. They, right, right balance of combat and mini games, and everything moves at a fairly brisk pace, and there's a lot of reason to explore. So, I'm not very far in it right now, but I really like it. Is this the superior game over Disney Infinity? I'd say so, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. We finally agree. <laughs> I still think Disney Infinity is better than Giants, but yeah, I think Skylander Swap Force has it beat. Um, I also finished up The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Uh, oh my god. We'll talk about that a little later. And okay. <laughs> I started Animal Crossing hint, hint. New Leaf. Yeah, you played it? Yeah, I've been playing a little bit of it. Uh, so far, yes. it plays a lot like the Animal Crossing I got tired of a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> um, so just... it's not turning over a new leaf. <laughs> uh, zing. Look at him. The pun counter returns. I'll I... let myself out. I just put down the down payment on my house. I've been living in a tent for the last few days. Yeah, you're in the tent. So I- I'm hoping at that point it picks up from there. One of the things that really irritates me was the garbage system in the game, where I... What's wrong with the garbage? In this game? Yes. I picked up a can while I was fishing, and I caught a can, and you can't throw it out, because you need a garbage can in this game. Or, (laughs) so, I'm used to just, from the old Animal Crossing games, all you had to do was click on it, and then say, throw it out, and it was gone. In this game, there was no such option. So I looked it up in a guide, and apparently you have to, like, as a mayor, go get trash cans installed or you take it to the retail yeah the the retail shop and then you they they charge you a recycling fee for everything you throw out yep and it's not that bad like you don't catch many boots and cans (laughs) so So that was just really annoying for a few minutes but it is what it is i can say without a shadow of the doubt that once you get going in that game it becomes the best one i've ever you'll ever play Really? Like once the, once the 3DS unique features like kick in, you'll see why it's better than the other ones. All right, I will so. hold you to that. Yes. If not, uh, you owe me twenty bucks for buying this game. <laughs> hey, you got a good deal, twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, Amazon had it for twenty dollars for a few hours. So it's a steal. You could just give the game back to Jason. He'll charge you a recycling fee. <laughs> yes, thirty-five bells. <laughs> so, um, gents, this is the last boss cast of the year. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and, and before we move on to 2014, we should talk about 2013 and ultimately lead up to what is our game of the year. Uh. So I don't think we played enough of the same games for us to have a definitive boss cast game of the year. So yeah. we're just going to talk about our own personal games of the year and see where this goes. But let's start with 2013 as a year. What did you guys think in terms of the the gaming year, calendar year of 2013? Good? Bad? So-so? Gut reaction, I'd say pretty good. I feel like just, I feel like as a mainly 3DS person this year, I had a great year. And it was really, really fun. There was always games to play. And even for console gamers, the you know, end of the life cycle, there were some quality titles that got put out steadily throughout the whole year. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I'd agree. I think it was a strong year. I think it was strong because... Uh, like it was sort of the, the swan song for all of the last gen systems. So they're pushing mm-hmm. things out um, that were, I think, in some cases meant to be, you know, the last great quote unquote game <laughs> for the system. So yeah, um, I think we got a lot of really good stuff. Yeah. Um, we're not going to go into our top threes yet, okay. but do you guys have any honorable mentions, games that you really like that came out in 2013, but not quite good enough to make your lists? I really enjoyed my time with Bioshock Infinite. I don't know if I put it on my list, even though I'm sure some will, but that was fun. All right. How far did you get I in know. it? I mean, like, that was cool. How far did you get into it? Uh, Like, I was only able to get in, like, 10 hours, so I mean, a ways, but, like, I always liked what I did, and it was always fun. I think I just got caught up in other stuff that I couldn't keep playing, but I could see that being someone's game of the year. That was that fun. So it sounds like at 10 hours in, you're almost done that game. 
Oh, great. Well then. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say. Without going overly into spoilers, can you give us an idea of where you're at? Oh, God. Um, I played it so long ago. Um, I can't even remember. I killed some guy. <laughs> Were you? No, I'll need to go back and see because I remember playing it and I was playing it with like Animal Crossing or something else in the summer and they kind of, I don't know. That's what made me stop playing it. It was Animal Crossing. Mm. So, I don't know. I do want to beat it, though. I'll put it that way. There's some games that I'll put down, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. But this one I want to get back into. All right. Um, I'm going to throw one out there. Uh, I The Last of Us is on my honorable mention list. Hmm. I, I know that that game is going to be the runaway game of the year from a whole bunch of people, and quite possibly other people on this show. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I think that it does some really amazing things, and there were parts of that game that I thought were the best parts, or best things I played this year, but as a whole, like, it was a, I don't want to say disappointing, but there were just parts of that game that didn't really grab me, and I think, like, the first half of that game was kind of a drag for me, after the intro. Really? Yeah. I think after the, there's a particular part where... You're being chased by a vehicle, without going overly into spoilers, where it right. gets, I think it gets better from there, and then there's a section of the game which I've talked about on my blog, and uh, I've hinted at, I think I talked about it in the spoiler show, where I was just like, man, this is the best thing ever. Just that one part. <laughs> but yes, not game of the year. But definitely worth mentioning. How about you, Matt? Throw one out there. Good, but uh... not good enough. I had a really good time with Rayman or Oh, I guess it's not early game this year, though. No. Uh, damn it. <laughs> I, I, I only well, discovered makes, it this yeah. year, so that makes me out. All um, right, the 2013, 2013 best game. What was that? Giant Bomb has that category every year of, like, the best game they played that came out last year but played this year. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Let's see. I'm going to have to go. I played a, a PC game, and it's not really that well known. It's called Gone Home. Have you guys ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, I had a really good time. I beat that. That was really interesting. I, I don't know if it was enough to make it into my top three. It, I mean, it didn't make it into my top three, but it was a really interesting game. It's I haven't really played anything like it because there's not... It's more of like a, a discovery slash point and click, but all in first person. But there's not really any like action in it. It's all just literally you're trying to unravel a mystery as you're going through this empty house. And you're reading notes and you're picking things up and you're interacting with objects and you're finding combinations for things and you're discovering things about your family and the history of your family uh, as you go through. And it's really kind of a, an interesting experience. Very, very short. I think I beat it in like three hours. But yeah, definitely uh, one of the standout games that I played this year. That one is getting a lot of love in the Game of the Year discussions. I think that was in the VGX Game of the Year nominee. Was and it? And IGN has that as a Game of the Year nominee as well. See, it, I think it could be... I, to me, it was really short. So, I mean, whether or not that is, you know, takes it out of the running, I don't know. But um, it took it out of my top three just for that. But definitely had a good time with it. All right. Um, any other honorable mentions? Guys, I've got a few more. I was introduced to the uh, Etrian Odyssey series this year, even though it was the fourth and fifth games. Those were pretty awesome. And... Uh, I loved them on the 3DS, and I, they're not in my top three for sure, but those games like opened up a whole new genre for me that I just fell in love with, and that was pretty cool. I think that it's a solid return to the dungeon crawl for any gamer, and that was really, really fun. And we got two this year, which is pretty cool, so that was a great, great moment for RPG fans all over. Hmm. Honorable mention, this was in my top three, but got bumped very late in the game. Fire Emblem Awakening. Oh, man. Such a good Such one. Such a great game, and I beat that game four times, and yeah. if there were other games to play, I'd probably still be playing that game now. It's just, the replayability on that game is nuts. And it's just such a really fun strategy game, and the mechanics of it are just, like, the best. It is mechanically the best Fire Emblem game yet. And I think the only nice. reason it wasn't going to get Game of the Year... Like, even before these other things bumped it out of the top three, is that I think its story was not the best Fire Emblem story in a game. And I don't think it was overall the best Fire Emblem game, but it is uh, right up there. I think the yeah. GameCube I think one, it was a bit predictable. Yeah. The GameCube one is the best Fire Emblem game. How about you, Jason? 
Man, I liked Fire Emblem a lot. Um, I'm not sure what else I can really say was like super amazing that I loved. Um, I'm not going to include Project Cross Zone. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about uh, was Injustice this year? Yes. I mean, I've only demoed it, but that game was pretty cool. And I think uh, it was just it, I think because it came out of like pretty much came out of nowhere for me. Like I wasn't really expecting that DC fighting game. That was pretty cool. But having only played it like as a demo, I can't really speak more for it. I that is also on my honorable mention list. I played okay. a ton of Injustice this year. It is so well done as a fighting game and I mean just the game in general. It had the that extended single player campaign with all the story stuff and then the online was super tight and mechanically speaking, I think they took that Mortal Kombat formula and just refined it even further and then innovated on top of that with all of the level obstacle stuff, the hazards. Mm. And it just played like nothing that came before it while playing like the perfect superhero fighting game. Oh, oh, I got another one. I can't believe I forgot about this. PS3 Dragon's Crown was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was such a cool game. So sleek, really cool looking, super fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think mechanics wise, it's held back from being probably anyone's game of the year, but still worth it for action RPG fans anywhere. That was a fun one. All right, I've got one more honorable mention before I say this. Matt, do you have any other ones? Offhand, I can't really think of anything. I would say, I mean, I know it's kind of a cop-out, but I, I every year I, I make fun of the fact that NHL puts out the same game year after year <laughs> after year. But every year I buy it. And uh, I would say that this year specifically is probably uh, the most, or I would say the most innovation they've done on the game in some time. So I would say this is the best, uh, I would say the best NHL ever. So I would say it's an honorable mention for me just because of that. Hmm. Nice. All right. And my last honorable mention would be Tomb Raider. Mm. Uh, Laura- I never played it. Me and I, I kick oh. myself all the time oh. for it. Oh, guys. I know. Guys. <laughs> like, I, I've never put any serious time into a Tomb Raider game until this one. I know. And it is amazing. I mean, it has the benefit of being the newer game, but I think it, un- it out Uncharted... Uncharted. Yeah. Nice. See, I've never played it. I have a feeling if I had played it, just by hearing people talk about it, hearing some of the things my brother played it, he loved it. Guaranteed it would have been either an honorable mention or in my top three had I played it. But I haven't, so I can't say that. (laughs) Yeah, I think it takes that Uncharted formula and kind of reweights the action and the puzzle solving and the adventure stuff to like just exactly where I want it. And then there's the graphics are gorgeous. The set pieces are really amazing. The shooting is actually really cool, and then it only gets better as the game progresses. The story's good. I really like this new version of Laura as a character. It's just awesome. All right, so this is the moment of truth, guys. We are down to our personal three best picks of the year, and I'm going to start mine. Number three, Bioshock Infinite. I remember that game pretty fondly. Like, that was one of those games that was awesome, almost, like, beginning to end almost entirely. There was two sections of that game in particular I really didn't like. But otherwise, just the graphics and the way it told that story, and I really loved the characterization. Elizabeth was an awesome character. Yeah. And the way that game ends, holy cow. Not going to go into spoilers. spoilers here. No, not at all. <laughs> Listen yeah. to the Bioshock Infinite spoils cast on Split Kick for that one. But yeah, I think de- definitely good. that was a almost fall out of my chair ending of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I went back and played the ending a few times just, <laughs> just to get it all. So how about you, Matt? You're number three. So my number three is Nino Kuni. Whoa. Hmm. I was thinking that might be your one. No, <laughs> no, it took took three. Uh, I literally, okay. it surprised me. I, I, you know, I hadn't planned on playing it. Um, I picked it up because I, 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 knew, I picked it up on the Target sale when it was on sale, and nice. it was one of those things where I was really curious about it, but I wasn't like sixty dollars curious about it. <laughs> so <laughs> when it went on sale, I picked it up. I had a blast with it. I thought it was really, really good, and um, definitely, yeah, I would say it's my number three solidly. Um, one of the best experiences I had all year. Did you say you beat it? You finished it? I did, yeah. It took me uh, f- okay, cool. 52 hours. Nice. So a few hours invested into it. 
Ni no Kuni. That is still on my to playlist. I was going to play that Likewise. after Lego, but then I got rid of that and got Skylanders. So now it's Skylanders and then Nino Kuni. Or at least I tell myself that. Yeah. Do you have Realistically, Nino Kuni? it's probably yes, I do. Oh, okay. It's probably Skylanders, then whatever I get for Christmas, then whatever I buy on Boxing Day, <laughs> and then Nino Kuni. Yeah, it's you keep tough. getting pushed back and back. Yeah. This time of year is tough because you never know what's coming in. <laughs> yeah. But it is very high on my games I need to play at some point. Yeah, I would say overall experience, uh, definitely one of the best experiences I've had this year. All right. And Jason, number three for you. Ooh, number three. So this is a 3DS exclusive list. So we'll go with that. Spoilers. But uh, number three is Pokemon X and Y. Nice. And I think that it, it could easily be you know, higher on someone else's list, depending on what you played, of course. But these are the best Pokemon games that have come out in, I'm going to say, over a decade. Like, maybe since the originals. These are the best ones. And it was a combination of the gameplay being familiar and solid, and the system, or the game using the 3DS systems to its fullest, all those capabilities, Street Pass, playing online, easy battle, easy trading, awesome story, cool new Pokemon. I mean, everything about that game just reminded me how fun the game was when I first started it in, what, 1996 or whatever? 98? Mm -hmm. And why I still play now. And that game is totally deserving of being on someone's top 10 list somewhere for the whole year. It's awesome. Well well said. Um, <laughs> have yeah. you, Jason, I'm guessing you have not listened yes. to the last episode of Short Attention Gamer? I have not. Um, listen for the Wii U part and skip the part where they talk about Pokemon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Unless you Fair want enough. your soul crushed, but no, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, I, I've heard, I've heard some bad things about it too, and I mean they're understandable, I guess. But no, for me it was great. All right, um, number two on my list. So I've been debating these two for the last little while, and where they were ultimately going to sit. Um, I'm going to go with number two, A Legend of Zelda: A Link Between Worlds. Nicely done. I'm so curious about this game. Oh man, me too. it's so good, and I. I beat it a couple of days ago, and that game is just awesome right until the end. And, like, right till the ending. Like, credits roll awesome all the way through. The dungeons, I love that system where you just get the weapons from the beginning or however you want and approach everything. Right. However you want. And then the dungeons have some really cool, interesting ideas. And not just, like, here's a way to use the ice rod, but um, just the way things are built, like... My, one of my favorite dungeons is the it's the dark one, and your most important thing is the lamp. And it's like, wait, how's the mm -hmm. lamp like? How does the lamp do anything cool in a Zelda dungeon ever? But they actually make really <laughs> great use of it. And then there's another one, the thief's one is another one of my favorites. It's a little easier, but there is something that it does that no other Zelda game has done before. And so I mean, like that entire time, I just felt fully engaged and. The motivation to explore was just so high. It managed to capture that feeling that I felt when I first played A Link to the Past like 20 years ago. Except nice. this is an all new game and I've played a dozen other Zelda games since. And this <laughs> one's right up there with that. Yeah, a lot of people say they just got it right. Like everything is just right in that game. Yeah, for sure. I am very tempted to play th through that again on hero mode with tougher enemies and try and play it in a completely different order. Will it dethrone the Mighty Ocarina of Time? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. And mm -hmm. I think it's... There was a lot more on the line when Ocarina of Time came out. Yes, exactly. And its significance to 3D gaming and... I mean, not just the Zelda franchise, but like the way 3D games are played um, changed because of Ocarina of Time and the level of scale and adventure and all that, I don't think so, but it is up there as one of the best. And if someone said, my all-time favorite Zelda game is A Link Between Worlds, I would not argue that. Cool. Wow. High praise. Makes I me even more exactly. interested. <laughs> Only been out for a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Matt? Number two. Uh, so I wrestle with my number two and my number one. Uh, a lot, actually. And I'm going to give number two to The Last of Us. Mm. Nice. I think just, I literally, I anticipated The Last of Us for a really, really long time. I was really looking forward to the game. Um, 
I got it. I played it and beat it in like one weekend. <laughs> like I just tore right <laughs> through it. Um, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was really well done. I thought the ending was good. I thought, well, I mean, I thought the ending was okay. It was good, but I, I love think, that ending. Yeah, I think the overall package was extremely well done. I really, really enjoyed that game. Um, I enjoyed playing it. I enjoyed the storyline. Yeah, I just had a really good experience with it. I thought it was great. I've talked to some people who really did not like the way that game ends, and it is for sure divisive in the way that it handles that particular situation. Yeah. And, I mean, we're we're not going into spoilers in this at all, but I really love that Naughty Dog took a stand and said, we want this particular ending because we strongly believe that this is where the story should go and not necessarily play to, I don't know, trying to please the majority of its gaming audience. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. They went with what they wanted to do and not with what they thought they should do. Yeah. And I think, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, yeah, it is one of... (laughs) (laughs) Definitely one of the most impactful endings this year. I really liked how that game ended, where it just, oh, the feels that I felt at the end of that one, like, oh man, that happened. And honestly, from a character standpoint, like, I was really invested in those characters. I thought they were written really well, and I thought they came out on screen really well. Yeah, Ellie is an amazing character, and I think Joel I didn't like as much until the end, and there's the stuff I didn't like about him. Like, there's a reason for that. And they, yeah. they justify it. And by the end of the game, it's like, okay, it all comes together. And yeah. you don't necessarily agree with everything he does, but Joel is Joel. And that is what he does. And I'm totally cool with that. Jason, number two. Number two. So, already been mentioned on someone's uh, honorable mention. Okay. But my number two is Fire Emblem Awakening for 3DS. Hmm. Nice. And I dare to say in an absolute that I think it is the and we're back sorry about that Skype at some point just magically crapped out and cut us off mid conversation so where were we as Jason said too many awesome games it couldn't handle it yes (laughs) it couldn't handle it couldn't handle it so where were we at I was giving my number two game of the year okay and that was number two game of the year for me also on 3DS Fire Emblem Awakening Nicely done. That's a pretty awesome yes. game. Totally awesome. And um, as I was saying before, Skype got rude and cut us off. Um, I was daring to say that it is a absolute like perfect blend of casual and hardcore strategy gaming, and it allures or it is just great for newcomers to the series, veterans of Fire Emblem. Everything about it was just great, and it captured that perfect tone right in the middle of both of those things. And th- I mean, the story wasn't absolutely amazing. But it was still fun, and you wanted to play through it all the time. There was a steady stream of DLC. It looked great. It was super fun game all around. And I think that it was one that really brought me back into that strategy RPG realm. Because I was kind of turned off to it because everything felt really stale and kind of boring. But this easiness, yet difficult at times, and deep combat system, fun relationships that you can have with other characters, it was a great, awesome game. And I, I loved every minute of it. Can't argue with that. Fire Emblem Awakening is an amazing game that I think if you've got a 3DS, you got to play that game. Absolutely. Like, I wouldn't have recommended Fire Emblem to like other Fire Emblem games to people who weren't super into strategy, but Fire Emblem Awakening is accessible enough that almost any gamer should be able to pick that up and enjoy it. Yeah, that's accessible. I mean, that's ex- exactly what it is. I mean, it sums it up in just one word, and it's it's fun, you know? You, you'll spend hours with it, and you'll enjoy every minute. Have you played Final Fantasy Tactics? Yes. How would you say it stacks up? I've played up? multiple versions, actually. How, how would you compare it to that? Like, would you say it stacks up? It's better? Or it's... Yes. I think that Tactics is a classic game, but I think it does lean more towards the more hardcore gamer. Yeah. So if you're new to that series, I'm sorry, not series, that genre, you won't quite get everything out of it. But with Fire Emblem... It doesn't walk you through it by holding your hand, but it shows you the perfect way to like progress forward. You know, you start off easy, and eventually you're learning like extra moves, how to plan better attacks. You know, using weapons efficiently and things like that. Right, right. Both good games, but kind of different categories in my mind. 
All right, that was number two. So moving on, games of the number year ones. number one. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Very nice for me. It's got to be Super Mario 3D World. <sighs> not Project Cross Zone. <laughs> Jet. No, not Project. I Project Cross Zone might be the game I played most this year on the strength <laughs> of the fact that it's a gajillion hours long. Um, yes. No, Super Mario 3D World is delightful from beginning to end, and just every single level has its own unique hook to it, and the power-ups are really smart, and it just, I just had a big grin on my face playing that game from beginning to end, and I mean, both Zelda and Mario were just spectacular experiences from beginning to end, and what put it over the top, I mean, this is, I guess, a little bit spoilery for Mario, but kind of like Super Mario 3D Land, there are extra levels that can be unlocked after you beat the game. And mm -hmm. I think there's there's four new worlds that open up after you beat the game. And you have to do some... You have to get all the green stars and the stickers and the, the, the gold flags at the top of the flagpoles to get, like, the last few levels. But, like, mm -hmm. there's an extra third of that game that is there for you to unlock if you want it, and it's, like, the best levels in the game. <laughs> Where it was just like, alright, these were maybe a little easy, and it was a lot of fun, and now that you've beaten the game, and you got your full experience, here's, like, the icing on the cake, and it's just ridiculous stuff that is way harder, and it's really for the hardcore Mario fan that, I mean, wants to put in that work. And you just get rewarded for collecting all those things by getting a whole new set of levels, like a third of the game you can unlock and enjoy. I like that. So it's almost like you got a full game and a half. See, that's awesome. That's an unlock worth unlocking. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not paid DLC. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you could win this and get a hat for your character, or you could get yeah. another half a game. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that you've already paid for, but you have to yeah. earn. Yeah, exactly. The best half of the game. Like, if you really want it, I think those levels can... Like, I can just imagine them being horrible to play with three other people trying to be super <laughs> in sync with the type of demands that, that those levels make you go through. But if you are playing it by yourself and you just want, like, the pure, hardcore Mario challenge, this is it. Or at least yeah. that part of it is it. So that is my Game of the Year 2013. And now it's Matt, your turn. Number one, Game of the Year. So I'm basing this decision purely on just the scope of the game and the fact that it literally delivered everything that it promised. Uh, my game of the year is, and I really wrestle with this, keep this in mind, because there's a lot of things that I don't really particularly like about certain aspects of the game, but uh, I think the pros outweigh the cons here. So uh, my game of the year is Grand Theft Auto V. All right. I imagine that's going to be a lot of game of the years. Oh. Yeah. Um, and the reason I say that is because just the sheer scope of the game, the attention to detail, playing through Grand Theft Auto, it's like there's so much in that game, it's almost mind-boggling. The the map is so big and there's so many things in it and there's so, like all the little details, like, you know, like newspapers on the ground have actual, you know, legible headlines and, you know, like the people talk to you and they make comments about things you're doing and just think as you play through, like you could play that game 20 times and notice something that you didn't notice before on the 20th playthrough, you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, purely just for scope and the fact that the single player experience for me was really good. Um, I thought, you know, the storyline was okay, but I thought the actual gameplay itself was really well done. The multiplayer, I don't really count as part of the game because <laughs> <laughs> I had a really horrible time with the multiplayer. Um, but I would say judging solely from the actual single player game experience, uh, yeah, I would say Grand Theft Auto V is my game of the year. Can't really argue that. That single-player experience is pretty amazing, and I kind of feel like they got the story-slash-missions right, in that yeah. every single mission had something different, it had its own unique twist, it was really fun to play, they got you to do some insane stuff. Yeah. And all the characters are really well done. Like, there were characters you absolutely hated, there were characters you really, really liked, there were characters that you know, you actually love to hate, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, you know, I think they just, they hit sort of everything right on the head uh, in the single player experience. That game absolutely deserves its props. I mean, even if there's going to be 
I think there's probably, like, a portion of the super elitist gaming crowd that's like, uh, Grand Theft Auto, mainstream, blah, blah, blah. But despite it being, like, super popular and selling really well, that is an excellent game any way you slice it. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a sort of magic aura around Grand Theft Auto because I, every, like, every time the game comes out, I never am into that series, but the new game, there's something where it's like, oh, I have to play that. And even with <laughs> GTA V, like, just that open world you're talking about, Matt, it, I mean, I want to experience that. Like, I don't care that it's Grand Theft Auto anymore. I just want to see what that is like. And that's, I mean, for a game of the year, that's an amazing quality to have. So that's, ugh. I, I mean, I still want to play it, even though I don't even want to play it. I want to play it. <laughs> Almost for- and that's a big part of the game, too, is that you can deviate from the missions and literally spend hours and hours and hours doing just random stuff. And yeah. you can't really say that about a lot of games. I mean, there are a lot of open world games. You know, you can think back to games like Red Dead Redemption and things like that. But, I mean, this world is so big and there's so many things to do and everything is accessible. Um, yeah, I mean, just the scope of it is just mind-blowing. One of my favorite little bits of GTA V was just I was randomly driving in the mountains and I ran into this guy who was a sort of extreme sports guy and then all of a sudden I'm jumping out of an airplane skydiving and then we land on top of a mountain and then we race to the bottom of this mountain on mountain bikes. And I was like, what? Yeah. What is going on here? This is awesome. <laughs> like, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's so awesome. Okay. And Jason, let's wrap it up. Your 2013 game of the year. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, man. Following up Grand Theft Auto. It's going to be hard. Um, <laughs> but if I had to look at a game that I enjoyed a heck of a lot and I played all the time and just encompassed the year and I had to look back and say that is the one game that is 2013 I have to pick Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS and I I mean it's in the prestigious 100 plus hours played club (laughs) which is cool and yeah it's the first Animal Crossing game that I was honestly I can say I was addicted to I would play it non-stop all the time and there's so many, oh gosh, like where do we even start? There's so many elements about the game that are just perfect. And it kind of like Fire Emblem, it capt- or Pokemon as well, it captures what the 3DS is about. And you'll get there, Jet, when you open up all the, the new options. But it made street passing super relevant, and it was perfectly done for that series. Um, the multiplayer aspect of playing with your friends, so well integrated. And it made that world feel like an actual domain like you were in this zone and other people had their own towns and you can go visit them and no one place was ever the same you might run into you know one of your old residents at someone else's town and they'll remember you they'll be like oh how is your new town clock you know and they know (laughs) these things and you can make your house like however you want there's seemingly limitless items to collect which is all just you know pointless in actuality but it's just so fun and it's so well done well paced brilliantly written it is i think without a doubt that's 2013 for me is Animal Crossing New Leaf. All right, those are some great picks. So to wrap it up, my top three was Bioshock Infinite, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, and Super Mario 3D World. Matt, yours were? Uh, Nino Kuni, third place. Uh, my second was Last of Us, and Game of the Year was Grand Theft Auto V. And Jason? The 3DS list, so it was Pokemon X and Y, Fire Emblem Awakening, and Game of the Year is Animal Crossing New League. I find it crazy there was no overlap in any of our lists. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that should just show you how good, I mean, that, like we were talking at the beginning, it was, you know, a great year, and everyone had what they wanted, so it was phenomenal. 2013, you've been great, but I guess it is now coming to a close. We've got Christmas coming up, and New Year's, and we're off into 2014. And who knows, I guess maybe we can talk about that on the next show. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 2014, what that entails. I don't really know, but 2013, it's been a slice. (laughs) All right, so let's close this thing out. Jason, what do you got going on? So even though I've been working quite a lot, I've actually been able to get back on my computer and finally cut some more videos for my YouTube channel. So one's already out for a new free play. I have two more ready-ish to go. And then I am also working on my yearly roundup, so all the games collected throughout the year. I think last year was like over 200 or something, I'm not sure. So this year I feel like it's a bit lower, but we'll see. Time will tell. I did a tally of the games I played this year. I've Mm -hmm. played exactly 50. Hey, not bad. Yeah, and I beat 30 of them. (laughs) That's pretty good, actually. (laughs) Um, I'm actually really impressed. That's good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) 
Um, Matt, how about you? Uh, I got a tearaway review coming for Big Ben Pop. And uh, spoilers, it's going to be an awesome review because <laughs> uh, the game's amazing. And then uh, we're doing the holiday gift guide as well. So every day, uh, I think I mentioned this on the last podcast as well, but yeah, um, every day they're suggesting a gift that uh, for the pop culture fan in your life. So um, you can go there uh, every day and see a new gift and maybe get some gift ideas for, uh, like I said, that pop culture person in your life. Yeah, and on my end, uh, Phoenix Wright, I, as of recording, it is in edits. It will be up soon, if not already up by now. Also, one thing probably worth noting, people are probably wondering, hey, have you guys played The Walking Dead yet? I haven't. As of recording, no. By the time this comes no. out, I've probably beaten it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Honestly, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I didn't play the first Walking Dead, the whole thing, until all five episodes were out. And I loved it that way. I, there was no waiting, and it was fantastic. And to me, like, half of me wants to jump right in and start playing it right away, and the other half of me is wanting to wait until it all comes out. So, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to wait that long, though. Yeah, I'm in the exact same boat. I have the patience of a squirrel, so I'm just going to do it. <laughs> all right, so until next time, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and we'll talk soon. In 2014, in the future. We're going back to the future. (laughs) (laughs) Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads.